Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're jumping in here in Ottawa into the H-Jet, but we're focusing on MIDI controllers inside of SPAD.next. Now, specifically, we're going to cover using the Behringer X-Touch Mini because it is one of the most popular little add-ons due to its price point for the functionality that you get. So let's go ahead and jump in. When we come into SPAD.next, you're going to notice that I am on the alpha version 091252. Settings, application settings, expert, make sure you're on alpha, close, restart. It's going to come up and if it tells you it has an issue because of SSL TLS you got to go to the discord to the news channel and there is a link to download an updater for the updater anyway do that then you're going to have to follow all of the instructions because you're gonna have to link your account in discord anyway you don't necessarily need this for the MIDI controller However, if you don't have the alpha, some of these things may not look the same and therefore it's hard for me to show you how uh, the same layout is done. So next up, let's go over to devices. And under devices, we've got the MIDI devices and we need to enable MIDI support and we want input and output on X-Touch Mini. Once we've done all this, if we had made changes, we need to close and restart just in case. That way, when we come over to our panels, we can find our X-Touch Mini. Now with the X-Touch Mini up, it does anticipate that you're using a default configuration. So if I start moving some of these knobs or pressing some of the buttons, you see them all light up. And that's because it is anticipating the default configuration from out of the box, how Behringer supplies it. If you've changed any of those settings, you're going to see additional notes or command changes start to appear. It's recommended that you do not use the non-standard config. That way, all of this just works and makes life a little bit easier. So here we've got the X-Touch Mini. And the thing to note when it's set up is when you turn a knob, you'll see one of those control change events going up. So even though this is an endless encoder, MIDI has values of 0 through 127. So this can also be used like an axis and you can control it that way. But because it's free running encoders, SPAD Next understands clockwise and counterclockwise turns and you can use them as endless encoders. Each of the encoders also has a push button on the top of it. So you can use this to trigger a button event. The first eight show up as control change 10, uh, and that's the control channel dot eight, the control channel number of eight. The slider shows up on nine. Now there is a layer mode, and when you go to the second layer of the X-Touch, now you've got 11 all the way up to 18. And then you have 10, which is mapped to the slider. So they put 9 and 10 on layer A and B. That way, 11 and 1 are on the same knob. Keeps your head just thinking the same way. Then each one of the buttons shows up starting at, in this case, 8. Because 0 through 7 is the first eight encoders. On layer B, they start at 24. 
because layer A is continuous for all of the buttons up to 23. All right, so up to 15. Then we come here, it starts at 16, ends at 23. A and B is adjusting the layers, and then the buttons again have the separate spot. So we're going to start off with doing something simple. We're going to take one of these knobs and we're going to map the heading bug to it. So when you come to add event, you now have axis value changed. So this would be like mapping something to a throttle lever because it's an axis. But we're going to use this like an encoder. And so we're going to use the tuner clockwise and the tuner counterclockwise. So we're going to go ahead and do tuner uh, clockwise. We're going to go to add event. We're going to go to send simulation event. Now, if we type in heading, we're going to find all of our options. And we can even filter down by clicking on the filter. Now, the standard event that works with just about everything is the heading bug increase and decrease events. So we're going to go ahead and use the increase with a clockwise turn. And with a counterclockwise turn, we're going to add action, send simulation event, and we're going to use the decrease. So here you can see in the cockpit as we turn, there goes our heading bug, and it's moving. Life couldn't be better. So that's great. That was easy. We're off to a good start. However, now I want to make the button that I push on it perform the heading bug sync. Just like on the heading knob, if we were to push it, it has the push sync. So for this, we want to push on the knob so we see it light up. And if you want, you can also highlight the gear icon over here looks like a Lego block and now when you press something the GUI will flip to it so it found the button for me I go ahead I uncheck it so touching anything else won't make the GUI change around so when I look at the button presses I now have the ability to add button pressed button short button long so button press is the moment you press it it fires it will also have the ability to add other events like repeats. A press short is going to be pressing the button and letting it go in less than a quarter of a second. Press long is based on the value that you've set in your settings. However, generally this is a default of one second. So if we hold it for a second, it'll fire off an event. Button released would be when you let go of the button. So you could have it that holding a button down fires an event or multiple events on repeat. And then when you let go, you assign a different event to be sent. Button held is also able to fire off modifiers for repeat events. And it's going to calculate that you've pushed and held it and then we'll start firing events. So it's a little bit different than pressed. Any button you can add a scripted event to. Scripted events are not by fired by pushing the button. It's just a place to attach that scripted event to. What's a scripted event? Well, it's something that you assign a data condition to. Could be as simple as when my airspeed drops below 40, do something. So I don't actually have to press the button. I'm just linking it so that it has somewhere to travel. These come in handy when we start talking about sending lights back to a MIDI device. Back on track, we were talking about assigning something to this button. So when the button is pressed short, and the reason for this, I don't need this to be something that repeats. So what's nice is I'm going to use the short button press to do the sync in case in the future I want to be able to assign a hold long to do something else. 
So we're going to select press short. Now, I don't need a condition for this because I don't want it to validate some event or some data to say that it's okay to run this. So we're going to go straight to add action. We're going to go to send simulation event. Now this one might be a little weird. But we're going to go to the AS1000 PFD heading sync. Now this is not actually an H event. This is a behavioral event that it doesn't matter whether it's a 1000, a 3000. Uh, this will even work with a vacuum six pack steam gauge, though technically those can't be synced. This is a behavioral event that is following along. So this is specially coded, hence why it's called a key event. So we're going to go ahead and use this and we intentionally have our heading bug over and away. Now when we press the button, you see it syncs up with the heading that we are flying in. So this is perfect. You make a turn on the FMS, it turns, and you want to resync the bug to be in line with where you're going. You don't have to spin it all the way back. So cool. You've now seen us map clockwise turn, counterclockwise turn, and something to the button. We're going to move on to the button below. And again, this applies everywhere. And maybe this is what always is the problem for some with a controller like this. It's seeing the trees through the forest. Where something like a Bravo with a specific label on a button, those are very clear what you're going to assign no matter which plane you're flying. However, when you have a broad blank canvas like this, you could be using all kinds of different labels and setting things up. So you may want to write down what your plan is ahead of time. However, we're going to map the heading autopilot button to this. Now keep in mind, we are going to map a generic event, which does work for a heading with the HJet but I do not recommend it. At this moment in time, you should be using LVARS. However, in a soon to come update, we've been told we will be getting K event capture, meaning all the buttons will be switched over and you will be able to use these standard events. So we wanna find that button. So remember, if we come over to our Lego block, push the button, it jumps to the button for us. Hey, that's cool. Turn off the Lego block. So we're going to come to add event and we're going to do again a pressed short. So we're going to add action and we're going to send simulation event because we want to send a sim event or a K event. Now we're going to go to sim connect and we're going to type in heading. But heading's not going to solve it. We probably need HDG. And you'll see AP heading hold. Now keep in mind, even though it says heading hold, there's actually a toggles heading hold mode. You can also do a search of AP with an underscore. And what you're going to find is you'll also find AP panel heading hold. Now this triggers the panel event, not the underlying sim event. So this is probably the better one to use because this one won't capture your current heading. The other will actually trigger the event that captures the heading and enables heading mode. So we're gonna take this and you don't have to enter a parameter for a K event like this. So it's going to go ahead and on a press short, it is going to send the heading hold. So when we look back into the sim and we press the button, look at that. We get heading mode. So we've already got the mode set up and we can toggle it. So as you see, it toggles. And if we don't have our heading in the same direction, because we're going to be making the turn, 
we switch to it it goes into heading mode and then you see the flight director going into the turn and of course we could have synced it now the heading director goes back or flight director goes back to the heading this is so cool all right heading back now let's start working on how to do the lights so we've got our heading hold working now let's move on to the light and so the lights in other devices, we would have seen something that would say change button light. Now, because this is a generic MIDI device and not specific completely to the X-Touch, though one day we might see a nice separate UI, uh, I don't think it matters. I think this works pretty well. But you use what's called a scripted event. So we set up a scripted event, and just like we would for any other button light, we have to reach a condition. That condition is based on data, and since this is the heading mode, we're going to type in heading, and I'm going to look for something labeled autopilot, and there is heading lock. So the heading lock is the mode, so we're going to click OK, and when it's zero, this means we want to turn the light off. So we're going to add action, external slash output, send MIDI command. We're going to pick our X-Touch Mini, and we want this to be the off, so we're going to say note off. However, we still have to specify the note is a zero, because the note is the first button on the top layer, and according to the manual, that starts at zero. Okay, there you go. So then we want the velocity. So this is zero is off, one is on, and then the control channel. And since the default has us on global channel of one, that's actually a zero because it's zero based. So there we go, done. Now, we could go and check to see that it actually does it, but it'll be hard because the light's already off. So instead, we're going to expect that we're right, though we may have to troubleshoot it. So we're going to copy this event, because I'm lazy. And we're going to paste it, and now we're going to edit it. So when it is a one, or heading lock is on, heading mode, we're going to change this to note on, the note stays the same, it's the velocity that changes because we want a 1 for on. And yes, velocity 2 is to make it blink, if you want it to blink. So there we go, we've got those elements set. And let's jump back into the cockpit. We turn on heading mode, and it lights up. We turn off heading mode and the light goes out. If we come into the plane and we enable heading mode, you see that the light comes on. You also see it come on on my book Bravo. It's also coming on on the Logitech multi-panel. This is pretty awesome. Hey, if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you haven't yet, maybe hit the subscribe. That'd be great. Anyway, Come along with us next time as we do some more cool things in SPAD.next and play with the new Honda Jet because I am totally pumped about it. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.